This week on the Push Ballers podcast, we talk about putting some effort in, general hygiene in the gym, and why is programming so confusing? All right, three, two, one, put in the effort, mate. Hey guys, welcome to the Push Pull Legs podcast with myself, Damik. And me, Tom Hull. What's going on, Bob? I always put the effort in, mate. 110%, you know that. 110%. I'm not going to be 110% today. Can't give 110% anyway, so don't worry. Literally impossible. Um, yeah, a bit tired. A bit tired. Not too sure why. Deficit, mate. Late nights, probably, mate. No, actually no late nights. No? No. Very strange. You're actually lifting, <laughs> you're actually lifting things now? I was lifting things. I did train about, yeah, yeah two really hours before. First time of the year. Uh, train first time of the year. It's going to do that too. It's tough. And then, oh, that's that's because obviously, obviously, I'm doing um, a sprint triathlon in May. And uh, but swimming, I'm good at swimming. Cycling, I'm good at cycling. Running, oh my God. Why do people do it? Like it's just I don't awful. get what people are running. I just, don't get it either. Just, it's only five k, right? And everybody's been like, "Oh, it's fine, that's fine." And like, it feels like death. Yeah, like, it's further than you think, isn't it? It's so much further than you think, and yeah. I hate it. I hate it with passion. So I did a little run after I did like a, a seminar workshop thing for a couple of hours on uh, Friday afternoon. Poor, poor sod. So I make him stay there for two, two till four on a Friday afternoon. Bad, isn't it? Oh, that's bad, yeah. And I, I did apologise. I was like, sorry, it's normally on a Thursday, but I can come. So I had to sit there and wait for me. Um, worth waiting it, for, though, isn't it? Oh, you are worth waiting for, mate. Yeah, it was good fun. Um, we'll talk about it a little bit today, what we're talking about-ish. But yeah, 5K on a triple. My calves have been sore. But it's only today, so it's Tuesday. That was Friday. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, my calves are in absolute bits. And I had to do a golf competition on the Saturday morning. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> so bad. I've never I've never known that. Like, Because obviously I do not run like for that prolonged amount of time at any point. No. Football, yeah. Could, I feel like I could do that and probably not get as sore. I probably would. But, yeah. You would, yeah. Very that's interesting, isn't it? That's my plan. <laughs> I'd be alright, mate, because I'm playing basketball on now, so I'll be alright. Yeah, right. But, yeah. Don't worry about it's, it. It's just annoying, because, like, my swim, like, my timing for my swim is coming out at, like, like top 5, top 10%. And then my bike's coming out pretty decent as well. And the run is just pitiful. And I'm like, brilliant. Oh, that's alright. We've all got to be, we've all got to suck at something. <laughs> Stop right. me! No! Got to do it. And then I combated it by uh, doing heavy split squats today and heavy uh, landmine squats because ah, I was like, smart. I mean, that's why not? That won't make me more fatigued. <laughs> ah, that's only going to help, if anything. So definitely going to help. I did some triphasic. I'm not triphasic training. I'm going to explain what that is later, but yeah. Nice. Far too complicated to what it's meant to be. No. Yeah. Or French French contrast training. Why, why do people why make it so complicated like uh, well we'll talk about that in a minute but yeah okay <laughs> you're not that you're not an advanced athlete tom stop it i am it's so advanced um i can i can do unilateral exercise oh wait no. um <laughs> what's been going on not a lot mate you know you know me not a lot there's not a lot going on to be fair we're just cracking on as normal um young michael's here at the moment so you think he's doing work he? on, in the other room He's in the room, yeah. yeah. Hey, locked away. He's locked <laughs> away. Um, so, yeah, we're just doing bits and bobs. Um, yeah, nothing crazy going on, really, mate. I'd be, I'd be wary because, like, I'm sure Isabel's probably beating him up. Probably, yeah, to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> or Laura is, one of the two. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it's something I'll be going on. But, um, but, yeah, no. We're all good, mate. We're all good here. We're all good. There's no no complaints to be had here. Apart from the weather. Well, yeah, I mean, fuck it. The weather was good Sunday, wasn't it? If you know, mate, if you're British, you just get used to this, don't you? It's you know? tragic, yeah. It was raining sideways on uh, Sunday. Not um, literally sideways, though, was it? Yeah, it was. It, it was literally sideways. Um, sideways um, <laughs> and the coronavirus has come to get you. So the I'm coronavirus. Not going, I'm not going to Brighton. Sorry. <laughs> well, this is the problem, you see. Bath does have a lot of Chinese tourists. And that isn't a great prospect. Are you saying that London doesn't? Well, no, I mean, as in, like, if there's another place that might get it, though, do you know? Yeah. It's, you know. 
So yeah, I'm just staying inside. Even more reason to stay inside and do nothing. And Whereas I, I have to go to a gym filled with lots of people. That would be the worst. One of the worst things. things. Touch things. I'm like, I'm gonna. Yeah. I think Sweaty. I'm gonna take like. I'm yes. going to take in like some hand sanitizer like and just use it every definitely just wear one of those masks because that definitely is going to protect you from everything oh, definitely I don't understand that like, <laughs> yeah the, the fact that the air can get in at the side of it not even yeah. on there nah, nah, nah. you're still you're still breathing the air what yeah yeah, yeah. you're still breathing, yeah, you're still breathing the, the air, air. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but just put those masks just in case just in case you walk past some somebody's with a sore so you don't get any sawdust that'd be fine probably good for that but yeah okay. everything else pointless um, interesting, mate. <laughs> well, um, in in better news, this weekend, as opposed to one person wouldn't let me, but I've had my first Easter egg. What? <laughs> oh my god! You're one of them, aren't you? I'm one of them. I had my first like like Maltesers like bunny thing, but that doesn't count. I mean, like I've had I've had like cream eggs. That doesn't yeah, count. Yeah, that's I, the thing. I physically bought like a large Easter egg. That's it's only like weird. one pound fifty one. Right? It's weird though. It's not because for the amount of chocolate you can get, you can find normal size. There's bar. something about Easter egg chocolate, and I say it every year. It's so much better than normal chocolate, and oh, it's so good. And I don't care what you say. I'm eating Easter eggs now, all the way to Easter. What, I, this is the only time they're out, so I'm going to prolong it as much as possible. Such a big kid, mate. You're just <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yeah. Point being, don't care. I wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't eat one. But it must be something to do with, like, we've talked about it before, I think, the amount of surface area like that's oxidised or something. Yeah. Must be. It's tough good, though. It's so good. It's that you're going Cadbury over whatever Nestle crap. Oh, Nestle's the worst chocolate. Just, just poor. Don't do that. Just because it's Smarties. My Smarties, Smarties chocolate Nestle. No, it's good. Yeah, isn't it? no, it's Nestle, that? yeah. Because yeah. you've got Mars as well, but they're all actually owned by the same company. Just made slightly different. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Cabri all the way, still. Still Cabri. Oh, Cabri, yeah. Cabri oh, or Galaxy. Yeah. Galaxy is a little bit, it gets a bit sickly after a while. Yes, it gets a bit, too rich. Mm, no. milk's like an everyday chocolate. Every actually, actually, yeah. So good. Not a green and black guy at all. It's like, oh, I love the the, the argument. Oh, you need, you need two bits. It's because it's shit. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's just speaking, of, speaking of chocolate, though, let's talk about what I want to talk about because of, I, posted I, don't want to I posted my email yesterday and I went on a bit of a run, as usual, on my emails that I send out. Um, <laughs> yeah. But like, I mean, I might just get a chair. Yeah. So, no, basically, like, I, I, obviously, everything that we talk about when it comes to nutrition and training and all that sort of stuff. It's to try and get people, I suppose, to see, you know, the light in terms of, look, you don't have to do dumb shit. You can just do the basics, do them well, and you'll get results. Um, you know, like we talk about flexible dieting, how you can eat a little bit of chocolate. You don't have to stick to the same calories every day. You can vary the meals you eat. And with training that, you know, three, four times a week, keep it simple. You don't have to train every day and all this sort of stuff, right? But I can't help but think there also needs to, we have to say this regularly because people seem to forget that it still requires effort. Like, oh. you still have to put in hard work. And, like, I can't remember who I was talking to about. I was talking to someone, and we were talking about content people were putting out. We were talking about something. And it's this whole perception that, like, working for yourself was one of them, dieting, training, all these things that you need to do to better yourself, somehow just sort of happen. And that there's not a ridiculous amount of hard work that goes into them. Like, you have to say no to chocolate. You can't eat chocolate every single day. You probably could eat a little bit, but the majority of people wouldn't be able to stop it a little bit, right? You can't go out to eat burgers three, four times a week. You can't eat pizza whenever you want. You can't have drinks whenever you want. Like, flexible dieting will work to a degree, but it's not fucking magic. And it's like the same with training. It, it was kind of... I can't remember, it, it's like you've got to actually push yourself. You can't just roll in there and be like, oh, I'll just do some squats, and I, oh, I lifted that way. It was kind of all right. And then, and then get out there and, and go and expect to look any different. And I posted it. It was a bit, it's a bit of a harsh thing to say, but I, again, I, I picked it up from someone else. I'm not taking credit for this. But it was something like whatever you see in the mirror is exactly what you deserve. And it was like this whole thing of like everything you've got is exactly what you deserve from that effort you put in. Everything. And like barring obviously a ridiculous accident or whatever, right? But like, Literally, like, your work, the way it is, is because of the amount of effort you put in. You know, your physique, the way it is, is the amount of effort you put in. And 
no one's saying that you have to try and be Mr. Olympia. Like we talked about the other week with, you know, with the sacrifice, amount of sacrifice. You just have to look at, look at what you're doing and go, can I do better for what I want to achieve? If you can, then you need to do that to achieve what you want to achieve. If you're happy with how you look and you're like, okay, I'm content with eating pizza and staying at the same way I am, then that's cool. You're fine. You're content. But it's the amount of people who say, I want to change or they ask questions that how can I do this? How can I do that? How can I lose weight better? How can I gain muscle better? How can I do all this? And it's like, part of me can't help but just say, just work harder. Like, just just do more. Because at the end of the day, all the stuff that we talk about helps to a certain degree. But if you're putting in no fucking effort, it's not going to get you anywhere. And it also comes back down to realizing where you're at in life and what is important. So people talk about all the time, oh, I want to do, I want to make this many sacrifices and I want to have this physique and I want to do this, this competition or whatever it is. And then you sit down and speak to them like, yeah, but I'm also... Um, my boyfriend's also going for a really stressful time at work. I'm also going for a really stressful time at work. Um, my family, you know, position isn't great at the moment or whatever. Grandparents aren't very well. It's like, well, how about maybe you don't then focus on that and do something, you know, focus on all that other shit for now and give it the amount of effort you can do when you have the time to do it. And I just think it's sometimes people are so like, just backwards in their thinking of going, oh, can I actually achieve this right now? But also is the amount of effort I'm putting in marry up to what I want to achieve because more often than not with these people that's the problem because they're looking for like oh what can I take to make this better what can I do it's like probably just work harder probably just say no to more things like it really is as simple as that sometimes and it just got to me the other day really really annoyed me because I think someone was asking loads of questions I was just like just eat less food <laughs> that, that boils down to it like whatever you're doing right now just eat half the amount yeah. like literally like yeah of course it's hard of course you've got to say no to things of course you can't go out and do certain things but what do you want me to tell you it was just baffling how like people aren't prepared There's the, in this day and age it seems to be this massive gap between what people want what they say they want and the effort in between i think as well because i've gone through there's there's one of my clients that's she's put on a little bit of weight as well and we're we're coming back down shocked and my i managed to she was like ah. How do you like? How do you do it? Because I want to know exactly, exactly what you eat when you diet. And I was like, well, very different, Sam. I was like, I I eat really boring food when I diet, and I have the same thing every single day. It's absolutely because I know the goal. She's like, oh, I can't do that. All right, don't. Then. How's it? Exactly. Fine. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> and then she was like, she was like, how do you get through? How do you get through like the hunger bit? And I was like, Sam, feeling hungry is a direct thing of losing weight. I was like, it's a direct side effect. It has to happen. I was like, you will feel hungry because your body's starting to use the weight that you've got for energy instead of you I, putting it in yourself. It was really strange, but the, we we found the, uh, the the culprit as as I, I was just chatting to her, and I was like, I know you've been out drinking, but you do that. I know you've been away for a lot. I do use that. And I was like, what's the thing that's been a little bit different? And I was like, you have a second child. All right, cool. How much of your kid's food are you eating? And she was just like, hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Penny dropped, absolutely penny dropped. And, she was, and like I this, every day. Then, like, don't get me wrong, right? Again, like don't get me wrong. I'm not really having a massive go. It just need people need to understand and marry up what's going on and where they need to prioritize certain things and all that sort of stuff. And I get that. And it's not all about it's not all about losing weight. Obviously, you know, gaining muscle is the same thing. But again, you've got to put effort into that. It's still an effort thing. You still have to do that and put effort in. But most of the time, it comes down to to fat loss and stuff like that. But it's ultimately like you have a choice every day you make those choices every day to put more weight on the bar or to skip a session or whatever and we always talk about look it's okay to skip the odd session move it around you in a week blah 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 blah. i'm not talking about that i'm talking about fundamentally day to day if you're just skipping shit all the time and the choices you're making like whenever someone offers you food you have a choice to make if the choice that you make is that you don't want to go for the embarrassment and say no and you just take it that's your choice still it's yeah. still your choice that you don't want to put that person out, whatever. And every day it's like, oh, I just couldn't, oh, I just, oh, just some ice cream in the freezer. Yeah, I know it was. Yeah, it's great. That's where it, that's where it belongs. Where don't don't know. Yeah, yeah. If you, so you wanted that ice cream more than you wanted to lose weight. That's what you're telling me. That, but that's your choice you've made. And like, and people kind of sometimes fall back on the, oh, it's not as easy as that. And I'm like, hmm. I'm like, uh, to some point it is it's to some point it is <laughs> it's like just don't buy it then don't buy it then oh well my partner's got to have it because you know they have it and i was like okay that's fine i was like but they're not forcing it down your throat 
like there comes a point where you just have to have a bit of self-restraint and and it's easy i suppose it's easier said than done obviously with all these things and we always say that with dieting and muscle gain and stuff it's simple but it's not easy and i get that but if you listen to the show long enough we give you everything you need to know like we've given you it all like what you need to focus on all this sort of stuff the basics of calories for muscle gain fat loss over the weeks and months be flexible but you know I think we have to sometimes occasionally have this podcast where we kind of go, yeah, the prerequisite to all the things we talk about is that you try hard. <laughs> like, because without that bit, all the other stuff doesn't make any sense. And I just think we sometimes forget with all the content we put out that it's all with this prerequisite that you're putting in some fucking effort. <laughs> and like, yeah. people I think sometimes try and apply it and they're like, oh no, but I ate that 25 grams of protein that was on the infograph and then had, had two glasses of two bottles of champagne for the evening, but I had the 20 pounds of protein for, for, for breakfast, so why am I not, like, bigger and seeing my muscle gain? Like, well... Weirdly, this, this, I mean, obviously we're taking for, like, a diet thing. You kind of said about work, but this 100% relays into, say, more my thing of educating people, right? 100%. Of, 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 of probably trying more to, so. Probably trying more to up, so. Trying to upskill, because... I, there'll be people that are like, why are they in that position? They, we start at the same time or they won't feel like they get enough from me. And I'd be like, no, no, they, they get exactly the same amount of time or same amount of stuff. Absolutely fine. But you know what they do? They go away and kind of either apply it, read up about it. Do It's weird. Like, I mean, we probably weren't perfect and didn't do our homework every single time, but we probably did our homework 85% of the time. Um, and they go away and do that because it's important to them to go and get better at their job. Um, and we've, we've had people on like exit reviews um, saying that they didn't feel that we looked after them enough. And I was like, I'm sorry. I was like, I've got to look after your career. No, 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 no. <laughs> you look after your own career. I was like, I'm not, this isn't it's school. Like, we talk about it before, about our first months at Third Space, how we, you know, we were like, in our first month, probably hit some numbers that a lot of PTs never hit in their first month. Mm. And it's like, well, what did we do? We fucking spent every, nearly every waking hour there. I, and that's well, not, yeah, I, for me, for me, that didn't seem like a time a lot of effort. I just thought that's what you're supposed to do. But obviously it is a lot of effort <laughs> to some people, right? And it is that element of, of that. And it's just... Yeah, I just think people are so quick and easy to go, and, and I don't I want... On, on the knowledge-based stuff as well, because we get called, you've been called on it before, I was like, where do you know that from? Why do you know that from? So, either, I read, I learned, so read, I read something, um, probably watched something over the years, kind of gone like, oh, why is that? Wrote it, written it down, put that down, and gone all further reading into a particular thing that we found confusing elsewhere. Um, it's just you want to do like you want to know, so you you research it and, and all that sort of stuff and i think it it comes from and i think i i think with what we do like again with the podcast as well so i started talking about on the email about like the youtube channel and like instagram and being comfortable on camera and it's like oh yeah but you know how you know you're, you're just so comfortable on, on camera for a youtube video and i was like oh yeah yeah i remember i just woke up one day doing that no, no, no. Have you listened to the first fifteen shows? That yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> like, no, you just start. You just do it. I, uh, I accidentally actually on. Oh, I was going through my iTunes, and I think so. As I was, I was cleaning some stuff away from my uh, hard drive, and um, and <laughs> I clicked on one of the first like first ten of our shows. Oh, we were so wooden. It was unreal. <laughs> and it was like the start of it. We did the same start. and But you rattled off the website. You We rattled off all of our handles, like Twitter, Instagram, everything like that. It was so rehearsed. Yeah. It was, But it was so bad. <laughs> it was like... It's the same with the YouTube bit. Like, 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 me and Mike do it all the time, don't it? Yeah, same. It's exactly the same, but it's it's exactly how it should be. It's exactly <laughs> how it should be. Like, right. I just think just people are waiting for the, the perfect time. Of, the push for legs podcast oh, i'm Dave. i can imagine and, and it was like you can find me on twitter i was like <laughs> and i was like twitter? dan's got a twitter <laughs> it was like at twitter at daniel underscore meek and i was like and i'm tom and you can find me at twitter oh. <laughs> i was like why are we tweeting i was like what what but, we like, but again but tom how many but okay how many podcast courses we've we been on no <laughs> Like, we have no way. Like, how many YouTube courses have been on? None. Like it is just I, like. I, to be fair, I've I've read a lot of articles about podcasting, or I've listened to a lot of podcasts. Would probably yeah. be the yeah. biggest okay. thing. So you put the effort in to learn, so, right? Yeah, exactly, right. <laughs> I, and it's that whole thing of like people are just expecting to be able to diet straight off the bat, 
And it's like, no, you just got to try being hungry. You, like, of course you've got to be hungry. And of course you're going to fuck up. Of course you're going to do it wrong. And then you got to go again. You go, why? Right, learn from that. Then just fuck it off. But it's that whole thing of, it's just effort, man. I just can't stand it in today's society. Like, it, it's just everyone's gone so soft. They want everything handed to them on a plate. It's like, like it's like with coaching, like with PT. It's like you pay for a coach. Like, yeah, the hard work starts then. Like, they're not going to do it for you. Like, you can't do it for someone. And it's just frustrating that, uh, you know, and no one listening to this is going to be offended because they, cause they're, they're going to be similar to us in, the, in that way, that they know that that's the case and they have to learn more and do that sort of stuff. So I know that it's fine saying it because it, it just, everything requires a bit of effort. And it seems to me that people are just not willing to put an effort in. And I actually anything, spend... Anything worth having. Spend, yeah, exactly. Anything worth having. The amount of conversations I have with my clients, the majority of my clients, I have to tell them to do less and to relax more. That's what I want from my clients. I want those types of people to go, oh, no, I do too much. Or, I'm stressed about this too much. And it's like, yeah, bring it back a little bit, scale it back, relax a little bit more. Because that tends to be a little bit more, not, not maybe like to a great degree, but how I am. I need to be told to calm down or relax or do a little bit less rather than do more. But it, it just strikes me as odd that nowadays, like, it just everyone wants everything fucking given to them. Um, and, it, and it shows in, in, in training and nutrition, it shows people, people who do the work, it shows. And that's the result you get is you get the results from the fucking mm. work. I mean, from yeah, client point of view, do the work, kind of diet, be hungry, that kind of thing. From a PT business point of view, guess what? Don't train, answer your emails, follow up with a lead. Don't just be like, oh, I'm going to go train now. It's like, I'm sorry, what? All right, so you've got two hours to train, but of, you uh, haven't got two hours to follow up on your leads, reply to some emails and send them out. The which amount could, of, the amount of PT. could take half hour. Yeah, the amount you, of PT you, to like you put want training to way way more important to yeah. actually building your business. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> the amount okay. of PTs yeah. that I see who uh, it probably happens in your gym, I don't know, but the amount of PTs I see who are more bothered about filming content for their social media than they are about talking to a client in the gym or a member in the gym. It's like it's, no, I no, think... get full, get full in the gym, get full within your little <laughs> circle of gym uh, in the members that are there. Then start doing online coaching, right, as a thing if you want to do it. And that's how you want to progress. And that's how you want to do things. But get busy. Get full first. Yeah. Get full in the gym. You've got, you know, 1,000 members. Get to know some of them. And then see if they want to do PT. Because I guarantee you in central and London, they can afford it. Yeah. Like, just go and, and it's, do it. It's like, oh, but it's selling. No, no, no. It's not selling. It's having a conversation. All right, you're in the lake press. How's that working out for you? Why, why did you pick that today? Cool. There, there's your conversation. You there's that, your in. You do that on Instagram stories all the time. You just do that normal chatty shit on there on Instagram yeah. stories. But you won't go and do it with a person in real life. It's like fucking hell. Siri, okay. Siri was getting offended. Uh, she's yeah, like, right. I'm not surprised. Um, it's, it's an interesting one. I the amount of that does annoy me, and the amount of trainers who choose to train for two hours nearly every day, but will but will also complain about not being busy. Mm-hmm. It that frustrates me. Um, yeah, and, and you know what? Like, uh, I just think sometimes. I get it. Like, you love training. Cool. Yeah, you get it. But again, I think. I'm my own product. Great. Cool. But you can see the successful Don't have trainers. Any but you can see the successful trainers from the non successful, and, and how, like you said, how busy they are, and all that sort of stuff from how much effort they're putting into other things and that they do and other sides of their business and on all the other areas that they do. And I question all the time these online trainers who are just constantly on their Instagram stories and constantly posting videos of themselves training, of themselves. All this sort of stuff, I'm like, I want to see your clients. Like, I don't see anything about your clients, ever. It's all about you, and it's all your shit. And it's like, you go for a full day, you tell me you've got a full client list, you tell me you've got all these clients, but all I see is you, all day, doing shit. Doing just stuff that's not related. Why are you following these people, then? I don't know, mate. I've st- I've, well, I, went through, I went through and cold the other day. I was like, following no, these really. people, and I was like, fuck them off, because they're doing my head in. Because <laughs> it's just pointless following them. Cause it I might make, do that, yeah. It doesn't yeah. make me feel any better. It doesn't make yeah. me feel any better. Um, <laughs> and I realised that, you know, you are, uh, unfortunately, you know, you what you consume sometimes is, is kind of makes you, it does consume you a little bit. So, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Um, so, yeah, like, it, but it, I just think it's... And, and it's not this whole like Gary V like always be hustling thing. It's not like you've got to work smart as well. But for me, the, the fundamental thing has to be you're prepared to do the hard work first. Then you can start working smart once you know what works. But to get to find out what works, you have to just do hard work. You have to do work that fucks up. You have to do work that doesn't, that doesn't work to know then as you get older what you can do to then work smarter and stuff. And it just really irks me, as you can tell from the 20 minute rant or whatever it's been. 
Yeah, Sorry. 24, 24 minutes. Um, <laughs> no, we better end the show there, I guess. <laughs> that was, it was probably only about 15 minutes of, the, of, of ranting. But um, but we can go into another one because um, – so one of my friends and client uh, put a post out the other day. Um, so this is, this is for you, Sarah. This is more of a public service announcement. And I'm sure – well, I 100% agree with her. And I'm 100% thinking that Dan will agree. Um, general hygiene in the gym. Oh. Um don't stink. <laughs> you know <laughs> like, when you smell. You know, like, so I think she had to vacate, um, you know, the stretching mats in the Marlboro gym. She had to vacate yeah. that area and uh, has had to move what bikes previously because of uh, of stinkiness. And it either comes from not washing your kit, wearing the same kit twice, or just, like, just carry, like, have a little deodorant. We have literally got deodorants in the... In the uh... Do you know what I hate? I hate... I hate it when even I go out and I smell like the other day I cooked, I think it was either bacon or black pudding or something. I went to the gym in the same t-shirt I had on and I was in there and I smelled it and I was like, oh my yeah, God. It's oh. Bad. And it just smells a little bit of oil, like a tiny bit, but I could smell it. I was like, oh my God, I feel so embarrassed. And I was like, there's people in there. You think, how the hell do you not smell that? <laughs> like, I don't get it. Like I, I purposely, because there's a cup, no, there's one client that I will, uh, <laughs> he doesn't listen to this show hundred percent. Um, that I, I have mints or I have a, a box of chewing gums that I will always keep. And but I, I chew gum quite frequently. Um, but I'll be like, oh, do you want one? Just casually, if in case they're brush nails, and, like, and it will just be a nicer smell to be around. Um, hopefully, he's, he, he vaguely he's not been as bad like this year. So maybe he's taken the hint over the last six months. Um, so I always yeah, offer conveniently every 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 time. Yeah, because I'm session, have, I'm having one, so therefore he can have one. So <laughs> I'm just being kind. <laughs> It's part of the service, isn't it, Tom? It's part of the service, yeah, exactly. I've, also, I've, I've also got a spare t-shirt here. Do you want to do this? I've got a spare t-shirt. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> well, um, but yeah, that's, that's a tactic, because if I'm having a gum, they can have a gum. So, just in case. In case the PT wants to get around that. Um, if you have one, that's fine. If you just force it upon them. If if they don't want the tea, don't force them to drink tea. Yeah. Okay. That's what you say, isn't it? That's the yeah, that's the uh, <laughs> the uh, rape infomercial, isn't it? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, remember that. yeah, that was a great one. If anybody's not seen that, go look up uh, "Don't Force Somebody to Drink Tea" on uh, YouTube. And it's great. <laughs> it's all it about. Sounds unconscious. They don't want to drink tea. Like they just don't want to drink tea ever. Like they don't. <laughs> they don't want to drink tea. If someone decided they want tea, but then actually didn't really want tea, don't start giving them the tea. Yeah. <laughs> you're making yeah. tea don't assume that they want to <laughs> it's quite clever isn't it? it's quite clever a little um, really? way they to put it <laughs> um yeah what else we got that, that was a public service mention um that was what i was talking about you said programming was a bit confusing because i just used a load of names, uh, words basically um it's kind of the lectures that i've been doing um we'll be doing around first place for the next three or four months um on i just want to see i want to see dan's knowledge non-existent mate non-existent because it was quite interesting talking about some of these um and just getting a view of and then when i posted about it on um there's about three or four trainers that i know quite well and i 100 percent agree with he was like those four have no purpose with any general population i was like yeah <laughs> you're probably right but they're worth knowing because you can scale them just like in CrossFit, right? You can scale them back and you're like, what do you take out to put into like a general population stuff? Like, um, so we were talking about maybe we do a podcast on, on actual like programming and periodizations and stuff. Or you just come to a seminar at some point. Um, the ones were the Bulgarian method, Dan, anything? No, probably just on one leg, is it? Just, oh, just one leg. It's just Bulgarian split squats for days. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's small off, but any Bulgarian. Day one, day one, one rep. Day two. Yeah, All right. Well, I see where this is going. Um, the conjugate method, also known as Westside. Um, not a hundred percent. Percent, but you know what? The triphasic training. No. French contrast training. You know, you hundred percent know contrast and complex training. Yeah, but I didn't know what's French about it. What they smell smells like garlic or something. Garlic. Yeah, definitely, that's definitely not racist. Okay. <laughs> 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 um yeah but okay the, the, those the, those are the confusing ones that i threw into them and then then magic in our seminars you have to go like research and find out for yourself i was like there you go go do it I'm just go do the ask. yeah go and put yeah. Yeah. <laughs> i'm not researching it i know these that's fine um but we we're talking about um so the the basic ones were you know linear and alternating linear yeah you get that right mm -hmm. ish 
non-linear, undulating. More undulating. That was the, that was the major few years ago. It was. I feel like people do that and think, oh, yeah, I just I just do undulating periodization. I was like, do you? Do you? Do you really? Do you imperialize? No, probably not. Okay. Undulating is just a fancy word that you've just decided to use. Block periodization. Very S and C based. Very S and C. Um, Wendler's 531. Classic. Classic. And I wrote, I put in the 2x4 just because when I trained with you, we got some decent results with it and mm. it was quite enjoyable. I also, on that, did we change it? I think we did, didn't we? Did change it, yeah. Um, we, we chopped off two weeks <laughs> because we were like, this is pointless. <laughs> yeah. But like weeks, was it like week six and week 14? We were like, we don't want to do this. We, I don't care about my block pull 1RM. I don't care about my, uh, or whatever, like, was it close? Yeah, it, was old, it, was the alternate, it was the alternative lifts, wasn't it? Yeah. Right back. You were like, what were we doing this for? We're like, I don't, I don't, I don't want to know. I don't care. This seems like a lot of effort for a week. I could deload a week early. Are you kidding me? Um, yeah, very odd. But we could do a show about that. It was just interesting that, because you said it's confusing, and 100%. Um, I think you can look up all these different methods and whatever, and they're so different in how they're set out. And I understand when probably trainers are first starting to look at probing, because uh, I'll go through this. And like you said, like you're pretty stick out there you're pretty knowledgeable on coaching or training and programming and you still didn't know a couple of them but mm. I, I would probably suggest that maybe that's because they don't reply to general pop so it's like why would i fucking bother 100 yeah. percent. but from my aspect my job is to look at these for kind of advanced athletes and be like all right what can we take and apply how do we scale how do we put in general population um which we can 100 percent from every single one of them and yeah, even I've, I've trained conjugate measures. I've definitely trained triphasic. I'm training French contrast right now just to see. And I would class myself as general pop um, ish. No, yeah, you're an elite athlete, mate. Come on. Athlete, mate. Absolutely shocker. Um, but yeah, it's interesting because I think more explanation on, not more explanation, do you even need to periodize plans most of the time? Mm, it comes down to the training intensity thing again. I'll go out on a limb and say I haven't really periodized many people's plans um, at third space for a, a while, um, just generally because they go away all the time. So that's their periodized plan. <laughs> and you're just going to different phases and they'll do movement progressions yeah. instead of like rep progressions. There you are. It's normally load and movement are my two progressions. So that's about it. Um, yeah, it's just interesting. I find, I find that the whole world of programming is uh, super confusing for people. And it should be more better explained, don't you agree? I think it should be better explained, but I just think, again, it, it comes down to having an awareness of where you're at and what you need to know. Um, mm. Because the amount of programming that's done at the elite level is required. So I wrote, I wrote, yeah, I wrote for these guys, I was like, five things that you, when you're programming, these are the only five things that I would even bother thinking about. I was like, you just got to go exercise selection. So what is a, applicable for that person your sets your reps your time on attention and your rest periods if you get those five done does, does brett Contreras even push the two by four anymore i don't think he does no, he doesn't at all he just talks about glutes all the time like he, all just, the time. he doesn't like put anything about his like strength training does he no he doesn't really talk about it and no. it was good it's still available obviously but um it was good when it came out mm. but yeah hit those five kind of golden rules of programming, you're probably all right. Um, just have a validation or rationale for every single one of you. Oh, and guess what? To have any good sort of progressive periodization, the one prerequisite of that is that you uh, work hard. And put that <laughs> oh, did that come back all the way around? Mm. <laughs> because it's true though, isn't it? Because the amount of times you see people periodize shit, I'm like, there's no need. See, this is, the, in, this is, this is the intensity these people are training at, because the reason that you would periodize is because people train at a high level, they need to then recover from that to then go again. And the majority of people just don't train at a level whereby they need to worry about it and they need to have that periodization because they're going to have a week off because they're ill or because their work's too busy or whatever anyway. Um, and it is trying to remember that. A few of my clients, yeah they won't train probably hard enough during the sessions and it's more chatty based mm. to me to even bother periodizing at all. And it, that is absolutely fine. That's, that's, less, that's, that's less a form for me. of periodization. <laughs> <laughs> 
Lack of, yeah, it's great. Um, all right, mate. Nice, solid. We're going to be here in about 35 minute mark. Oh, like that's, enough, mate. that's enough. That's enough. That's enough of us. Um, any other news? No, no other news from me. Um, no. Only if you want to um, start coaching with me on roughly the 1st of April, which is not that long away, then you can oh. get in touch now. Um, yeah, my wait list is a little bit shorter now, and I've sort of set some definite dates. So, yeah, 1st of April. That's not an April Fool's. Um, <laughs> um, so, yeah, if you're keen and you want to get going and you're prepared to put some effort in alongside it, let's just say that again, shall we? Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> um, then, yeah, then let me know. Just drop me a message on Instagram. Wonderful. Don't do that with me. Tom doesn't use Instagram, so... <laughs> I know I'm really mad only to post his Spotify that he's listening to on this even to every time he works out yeah, much. <laughs> I haven't been you can tell when Tom's busy um, <laughs> that my stories dry up and I barely have uh, yeah busy Shock. busy mate busy, busy. change of the world that's it one step at a time or playing golf and running apparently uh, also that yeah <laughs> alright mate um, thanks for listening guys and we'll catch you next week speak there